battle with Ashtar. Now this is a pretty simple boss battle. He teleports and changes from area to area and unleashes these fireballs, but that's about it. He he moves really slowly, you can get a lot of good hits on him, especially if you can have have the clone set up. But after only two or three times or so of him uh, doing changing for you know changing places and using the fire, he's pretty easy to take out. Now, of course, if you thought that was the end of the game, we've just killed the, the main protagonist that we've been trying to get, well, this cutscene is going to prove to you that it may not have been as simple as that. And here we go with some classic storyline. Ryu now still has to stop the, the evil forces from winning, from being unleashed uh, amongst the world. He wants to take Irene. Irene just tells him to go ahead, she'll be alright. And Robert steps in to say that he'll take care of her while we go ahead and stop the evil. Here is act number six. A pretty short level to start it off. Pretty basic cave entrance style level. Uh, a lot of the same enemies we've been dealing with. The bats, the fire, the club guys, the little flea men of course can be annoying. As we drop down to the next area, we have a series of little jumps to go down. We can continue over, same kind of basic premise, taking out the enemies. This can be a little bit of a pain because you can't quite see everything going on because the background kind of, you know, stops your vision. But take it pretty slow through there, you should be able to get through it, no problem. Take out the flea men, those are the worst. Just take them out. As, quick, as soon as you see them, take those guys out. And now we have another cutscene as we are going to uh, see us enter, or see where we're actually heading, our final goal. As Ryu is seeing where he has to go, we now go back to Robert and Irene. And now it looks like the a mysterious stranger, someone Irene knows but Robert doesn't, hmm, has just shown up to confront Robert and Irene. Of course, Ryu is going to know nothing about that as he continues on his journey through level 6. Now, at the end of this level is we're going to be doing our second battle. If you watched my first uh, run, my run of Ninja Gaiden 1, I mentioned that there's a boss that you... You fight in all three of the Ninja Gaiden trilogy on NES, and we'll be seeing that boss, the the two dog esque boss, once again here. Uh, in this one, you can only hurt one of them. You can only take out the one. The other one is just kind of a decoy, and you can't do any damage to. This is one of the toughest boss battles, in my opinion, in the game. Trying to only attack the one that you actually can hit it can be a pain when they're jumping all around. You accidentally focus too much on the one, and the other one ends up jumping on you and doing damage to you. 
Like I said, overall, this is definitely one of the toughest battles to deal with. Now, the projectiles that you do shoot out aren't too bad, but having two things that do a lot of damage when they hit you, jumping all around, you can only attack the one, you can't even kill the other one, is definitely a real pain. They're almost taken care of, just a few more hits left. And there you go, they explode, and we will now move on to the next level. Ryu stating what I previously stated that the, uh, the enemy he had fought before from the first Ninja Gaiden game. And we've already had one kidnapping plot of Irene throughout the game, but we now have a second one to deal with, as Robert was unable to protect Irene. Even though Robert was unable to protect Irene from being kidnapped again, he meets up with Ryu to tell him to continue on and he'll stay behind to make sure that nothing uh, comes after Ryu, I guess. And he has his great Jungle Rat Rob, his nickname. He gets, I guess he has to have his own catchphrase. Here is level 7-1, a weird waterfall of green, disgusting, you know, Nickelodeon gack uh, falls in the background. Now this is actually the final level of the game, or final act of the game. Act 7 is the final one, just like 6 was in the first one. Uh, and you can expect that there's going to be every just little bit, as soon as you, uh, if you just, uh, after a few screens of each part, you're going to switch to another area, but of course there's going to be a cutscene that kind of draw out each of the areas. That's one of those things you either, like, the good thing is, when you're playing the game, if you've already played it before, you can skip the cutscenes, you don't have to watch them every time. Uh, and if you actually take out all the cutscenes from the game, the game in length isn't really that long. It's, there's cutscenes that make it seem like a much more epic, much longer uh, game on the NES. And uh, if without the storyline, this game would have just, you know, of course, been a generic action, you know, hack and slash game uh, with, you know, pretty severe difficulty, you know, learning curve. But it still would have been, you know, just your average game. These cutscenes uh, not only are really well done, they just also. Uh, make the game longer, make uh, the playtime longer. I guess one of those things where it's artificially lengthening the game, I guess, but in, uh, for these games at least, considering they're not the long to begin with, it's definitely a nice break, especially with how difficult these levels can be. As we have a small cutscene of Robert dealing with what he's dealing with as Ryu now runs and gets to the next area in Act 7-2. And we're inside this cave area. I don't know really how far he ran, because we entered a cave and we would have just come out here. I don't know how far Ryu was running between that cave entrance and, and this area. As we reach farther and farther into the final level, you can see now it's getting more demonic, more darker. You have like these beating, weird looking, you know, hearts in the background. Definitely a weird uh, level design. Definitely a very uh, demon-esque, I guess, with the, the whole theme of demons getting ready to be unleashed into the world. Now this is some of the hardest jumping to deal with in the game. With these, those, there's dragons that shoot the fireballs out at you and just have a steady stream of them almost non-stop. Uh, can be very, very challenging to make certain jumps in the game. 
is one of those things where timing is everything. You're gonna do those artificial counts in your head of, you know, preparing to get ready to jump, and then at the right moment make your jump and hope that something else in front of you isn't gonna hit you, or else you'll end up taking a fall. Now this part can be a little bit annoying, as I'm just gonna grab an extra bit of health right there, because I'm taking a lot of damage, and the enemies not only... Like, I've only been hit a few times, but enemies do so much damage. And, uh, as you'll actually see in the third Ninja Gaiden game, which is considered to be the hardest because of the damage factor, that enemies, normal enemies, can take almost half your health away in less than you know, one, maybe two hits. You'll see that they take away a ton of ha uh, damage. I guess it was like a glitch in the game or an accidental thing they didn't mean to put in there, but the difficulty is very severe uh, in the third Ninja Gaiden game because of the damage factors. I think overall Ninja Gaiden 3 is, is one of the easier games Especially if, like, if you took out that health issue, it's uh, the easiest, I think, of the three uh, Gaiden games. <laughs> 